Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be setting up a couple 120 amp breakers for our outlets and we're doing it all off of this Ames Power 1200 watt power inverter. And what I'm gonna do is I got a midnight solar quad breaker box here. And I got two breakers and I got all the components and I'm gonna show you guys how to wire outlets in your van. I didn't see many videos kind of going over this. So I'm gonna do this to the best of my knowledge and we're gonna get this installed and we're gonna have two outlets and I'm gonna show you everything you need to make this happen. So let's do it. All right, so first things first, I'm just gonna show you the power inverter and what we're dealing with and then kind of what we're gonna get into. I have this Ames Power 12, 100 watt with a 2400 surge and it inputs 12 volt DC and it outputs to 120 amps. So we're going to do two AC um, outlets. I kind of have one over here in the wall already. I'm going to do one under a couch here and it's got this uh, basically this output and input. So this is going to be an input for charge. This is going to be an output to the to the breaker box. So here in between the breaker box, I'm gonna set up this inline fuse just as a protection. And then from there, it's gonna go into my breaker. And what I'm using to do all this is, I just got this nice monster um, extension cord that I had that wasn't working anymore. So I just cut it and it's 12 gauge wire in there inside the jacket. And I will just strip this and I will wire it to my inline fuse here. And then from the fuse, we'll go into this breaker box and I'll show you how I wire all this. This is a midnight solar quad breaker box. And I have the uh, midnight solar bus bar here, the insulated bus bar. So this is for my common. And it's just gonna kind of sit up off the box here. I'm still working on getting all this in place and then I have two breakers in the box and let's get after it so I got my inline fuse wired here I put my little grommet on top and this is going out to my load so I'll just cover this up with my proper cover it says load put that on there use the provided screws looks really nice i like that clean look it gives you and now i'm just going to tighten this down and then we'll start wiring the box so i got my midnight solar quad box i'll have the links in the description for all of these parts i got my insulated common bar there and i just put that in with some number 10 countersink screws here on the back and then i just got the grinder and i just kind of flatten them so you can see that they're off on their own this bar is just floating off on the plastic. It's not touching the metal, so it won't cause any problems when I hook everything up. And I'm just gonna knock out my top piece here. I got my inline hooked up and I got my box here and I ran my cord through. I got one of these just, I'm not an electrician, so I don't know these terms, but I got this little injury gland here coming in. My cord's gonna come down and now I'm gonna strip the wire and hook it up to the ground in the neutral and then I'm gonna start wiring my uh, breakers. We are gonna wire our breaker. This is a 20 amp breaker. So this is going to go to our kitchen area. I got a 20 and I got a 15. So we're gonna wire these breakers up. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna run our hot wire into our breaker here. And we're gonna use the uh, butt connectors with the terminal ends here, these guys, 12 gauge wire. This is stranded 12 gauge wire. So we're gonna add these onto this. We're gonna crimp it and then we will put it on our breaker switch. So I'm gonna put the on up top and the off on the bottom, off on. And I'm gonna wire them here to this top one. Just make sure all your ends go to one end and all your outs go to the other end here on these breakers. These are the, uh, these are the midnight solar MND, MNE DC 20 circuit breaker, 150 volts. So 
let's hook it up. Now I'm going to use this 12 gauge wire here. It should be black. I don't have any black. It's red. And I'm going to hook the hots up to each other. I'm just going to daisy chain them. And I'm just going to use the uh, wire connectors as well. So this is an easy process. So I'll just cut a little bit off and strip it. Put on a in terminal ring here, 12 gauge wire. So make sure you're using 12 gauge wire. It's pretty much the required wire gauge. And then before I go too far, I'll go grab my heat gun and I'll heat these connectors. I have the heat shrink connectors here. I always give it, see it wasn't tight enough. Good thing I said, always give it a good test. Looks like I missed the crimp there. Always test your crimp as you see there. I didn't have it tight enough. I have these Harbor Freight wire crimpers. They're not the best, but they get the job done. They were like $6. I got my, once again, Harbor Freight heat gun here. And I'm just going to heat these ends up. I got them heat shrunk and I'm just going to hook my end. This is coming in. This is my load. This is coming into it. So it's just going to be here on the top. The off on is in the upwards position. So I'm just going to put this on top. And before I will hook on my daisy chain, then I will throw on the washer and the nut. So there we have one breaker and that will probably go here on this slot and I'll just do the other one. So we got our 15 amp breaker here and we got our daisy chain. So we'll hook that up, tighten her down nice, get it tight, positive connection, nice and tight. You're in the vehicle, you do not want any bumps loosening your connections. So there we have it. Probably could have cut the daisy chain shorter, but I just do stuff long sometimes just for safety. So there we go. We got those two. And now we can go ahead and wire our outlets, which are here on the wall. So now I'm going to take this uh, metal loom here. I think it's called split loom. I don't know. You guys are going to slam me in the comments, but I'm going to take this since I did use Romex. I'm going to run my wires through this just so I can kind of meet quote unquote van code. So I'm going to run the Romex wires through this and then up into my box. I got it on the wall over here. It is a tight squeeze in here. So I got my two cords coming in. I'm going to have to strip these wires down and connect everything to the proper place. But I got them in and it's going to be a very tight squeeze. It's a small little box, but if I had a bigger one, it wouldn't fit. So I'm happy with the size. My wires are barely going to make it. I'm just going to take my cable here and I'm just going to strip the jacket. Don't cut your hand off. Cut it off here. Expose my wires. So this is actually Romex. I know people don't technically use Romex in the van. I mean, some people do, but the more I looked, this is just what you use to wire your outlets. So I just went with it. It was actually pulled out of a RV. So I stripped and gutted an RV last summer and I saved all the cords. So I figured if it was in the RV, it's safe to be in a van. So I'm gonna expose these cords, cut it off. And now I'm just going to wire it all into the proper outlet here. The ground is just barely going to fit. Excited it fits though. So I'm wiring up my 15 amp breaker, my midnight solar breaker. It actually works with this quad system. I'll link all these parts in the bio description. I always call it a bio and hopefully everything will fit gonna be a very tight squeeze. Now I'll wire this other side. Might help just to kind of bend these wires a bit first. So I now am running my ground. This ground actually goes all the way down to the chassis. I drilled on its own little hole for it and it's coming up and I'm just gonna ground the uh, breaker box right there on the ground and it goes down under the van into the chassis like I had just said. 
but you might want to do that ground all your systems so I'll put the ground in always check your connections you saw I just checked that ground it was loose everything is very tight I'm just gonna give it a little extra tighten because I don't want anything coming out and then we'll test all these tight everything's tight everything's very tight feeling happy super crammed in I props to anyone that fits four breakers in here that's impressive so now we will put the cover on if I can get in here it's so tight I'm glad I didn't put my bed together yet I would have been struggling to say the least okay so I got my plate I punched out my two holes here and I'm just gonna put these breakers in through here now I've been waiting to do this job for so long I finally got all my parts got that in now let's throw this one in All right, we're under the couch, we're working on the van, we're in tight spaces. I'm just gonna cut the jacket off this wire. I got a in-wall USB and USB-C. That's pretty cool. USB-C will be the future. I don't know what you kooks think, but I think it is. So we'll bust that open, and then I just got a wall plate. And I got my outlet box. I put this little thing in the back just to protect the wire because it's nice and it's got a nice plastic rim instead of that harsh metal. So there we go. Quick glance at the instructions shows us that the top screw is our hot. So there's our hot. It's the gold. Okay, so I was working on the outlet. My camera battery died there. But you can just see here, I actually ended up sticking these in and wrapping them counterclockwise around in there. So I got my hot on top, my neutral on the bottom, and my ground down there on the bottom. You can see I wrapped that as well. And now I'm just going to put some screws in this and put it in. So we got our outlet in, looks nice and clean. Now we will finish wiring the breaker box to the inverter. So I'm just wiring this uh, ground fault circuit interpreter, so a GFCI here. And this is just gonna kind of go for my outlet from the, uh, so when I hit shore power, we can charge off of our pure sign inverter with the auto transfer. This is gonna go into the inverter, so this is gonna be the input. I'm just going to put this inline protection on there just in case if I if there's a RV park and it's got a janky plug or something happens it's not going to fry the inverter so I'm just installing this this isn't a mandatory step but I'm just doing it to take extra precaution and it's very straightforward the green the black to the gold the green to the green and the white to the silver so now it's time to hook everything up to the inverter. I have a master on off switch for my MPPT charge controller and I have an off for my battery bank. Everything is turned off. The power is off. I tested it with my multimeter. It's definitely not on. So now we are going to install our um, ins and outs so we can get this power into the van and we can get it to work. So we're gonna do that. And we just have a output here on the top and that outputs gonna go into my breaker box with the uh, br two breakers here and then the input is gonna come from this down out and then I still actually need to wire before we hook everything up this outlet inlet to plug in so I am going to just plug this in. This doesn't have a home yet, but I'm just gonna plug it in so I don't have an open circuit. And this thing's pretty self-explanatory. It just has the holes for the um, hot, common, and ground. 
and then you just kind of tighten those screws up there on the top. So I'm just going to wire this. It's just going to kind of hang out on the ground, but I don't want anything short circuiting. So let's just do a quick wire job on this and then we'll hook everything up. That was a pretty tight squeeze in here because you got to put this uh, cover on first. So I had to actually cut a new wire and I'll rewire my um, GFCI here. But if you can see, I just got all my colors lined up in there. And this is my out once again, and this is my in, and that's the shore power line. So I'm gonna rewire my uh, GFCI and then I'm going to turn it all on. All right, everything is wired and now it's basically the moment of truth. We'll turn the inverter on. And the inverter's on. The breakers are switched to off. We could go ahead and uh, switch the breakers on, then we can plug something in over here. All right, we got our lovely van assistant. And gonna she, check his work. So plug it in. We got an immersion blender. I don't think this thing pulls tons of power. Let's see. 225 watts. Let's hit it. Um, yeah. I had nothing to do with that. Kevin is the electrical wizard. So, feeling good, feeling confident. And you can just see over here, I got to clean all this up. This will get very cleaned up, and I'll show you the end result before I leave you. Okay, so now let's do the ultimate test here. I got a 1500 watt heat gun, Harbor Freight Special. You know, I've talked about this thing before. And I'm just going to turn it on and should be power and we shouldn't have anything trip or switch so let's hit it that's the low setting everything's running let's see what we're pulling quite a bit of power this thing uses but it's working it hasn't tripped the system that makes me more happy okay so i finished wiring the breaker box and i got my ames uh power inverter 1200 watt and then this is the out so power goes out i have a breaker here 15 amp breaker and that goes into my breaker box and that hooks up all the outlets and then all the outlets come out and I tried to get all the proper stuff. It's really hard getting electronic parts these days, but I got all my outs coming out. They run along and then they just go up into the wall. And then here I just use this monster cable. It's a uh, 12 gauge. It has three 12 gauge stranded wires in there. And this is just an old extension cord. It's a really nice one. And I'm just running that to my power inlet so if i wanted to charge off shore power i got it just right here there you go and i can charge if i'm if i ever have shore power off of this ames power because it has the auto transfer built in wiring that inverter isn't that difficult i think all you guys got it back at home i hope this video has helped and i'll try to get more evenly lit and if this helps check out vankooks.com we got a van kooks and master class build series that would help a lot so if you're looking for more check that out thanks kooks see you soon